When it comes to financing your dream home, FHA loans can be a viable option for many prospective homeowners. See, FHA loans are backed by what's called Federal Housing Administration. See what I did there? FHA. Now, most people know this loan product or loan type as first time home buyer loan, home buyer loan, or home buyer buying program. Retard alert class. But it's actually called Federal Housing Administration. So now that you know, make sure you share it with someone else so they can seem smart too. FHA loans offer several benefits that make home ownership more accessible, particularly for those with limited funds or lower credit scores. Now, my goal is by the end of this video, you become an FHA expert. Also, just don't take my job because you no, know, I need to do loans. And as you guys know, I'm on a mission to help a million families. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Mr. Marcel and I teach first time home buyers like you how buying a house can be simple, easy, and fun. What are FHA loans? Hmm. FHA loans are mortgage loans insured by the Federal Housing Administration. Now, that is a government agency within the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, a.k.a. HUD. Have you ever heard of HUD? This is them. These loans are designed to assist home buyers who may be having a difficult time qualifying for a conventional loan due to a lower credit score or limited down payment funds. It could even be maybe you just have a higher DTI. Whatever the issue is, FHA is fine. So here are some key benefits of an FHA loan. One, lower down payments. This is when FHA typically requires 3.5% down. This is why everyone thinks of it as the first time home buyer. Like, hey, we want the loan with the 3.5% down. This makes the price of home ownership more feasible for buyers with limited savings. They also have flexible credit scores. FHA loans are often more forgiving when it comes to credit scores and borrowers with credit scores as low as a 580 can still qualify. Obviously, there are qualifications, but you can still qualify. Technically, we could go as low as a 500 on the credit score. You just have to put down more money. So because you're qualifying with less of a credit score than they normally want, you put down 10% instead of 3.5. Now, FHA loans offer competitive interest rates, helping borrowers save money over the life of the loan. Mortgage insurance on an FHA loan requires borrowers to pay. Yes, you have to pay into the insurance, but it protects, not you, unfortunately, it protects the bank against if you ever default. So mortgage insurance premiums provide protection to the lenders in case you default. This requirement allows borrowers with lower credit scores and small down payment to have access to a loan that you probably want to have if it wasn't for FHA. So this is why it's good. It's a way that the bank feels safe and you get access to a loan instead of just being like, nah, you don't qualify for conventional. Goodbye. Now, FHA requirements to qualify for an FHA loan. You have to meet specific criteria, including a minimum credit score, which I told you could be 500. You also have to have requirements such as employment and income stability. The reason being is because borrowers need to demonstrate a steady employment history and it has to be sufficient enough a sufficient enough income to cover the mortgage payments. You can't borrow money from a, to buy a house from the bank and you just don't have the enough money to pay back the loan. That doesn't work like that, you know? The banking system doesn't work like that. <laughs> debt to income ratio, FHA loans, well, the guidelines regarding the borrower's debt compared to their income, typically the debt to income ratio must be below a certain threshold. That means, the amount of income you have compared to your debt has to qualify based off a number that we have here. Normally, if I remember correctly, granted, I don't have my notes in front of me. Are you stupid or something? I believe, I think the front end, so you have a front and a back end. The front end is like a 46, a 43, something like that. It's in the 40s. 
can't remember if it's 43 or 49. It's somewhere in between there. But your front end, meaning your income and your mortgage has to be at least a 43. Well, 43 to 49, somewhere in between there. And your back end can be a little higher. Your back end includes all of your debt, meaning your credit card, if you have a lease, any debt. Now, we do not take in account for your... If you're renting, that doesn't count because you're not going to be paying rent anymore. So a certain debt that we disqualify, but you have to speak to your lender so they can go over it with you. Now, the FHA loan application process. Applying for an FHA loan involves several steps, including choosing an FHA approved lender like me. Yes, not all lenders actually do FHA loans. That's news for a lot of people. Now, you start by finding a lender that's approved to do FHA like me. The room is to myself. We got to gather the necessary documents and collect and organize the required documents, such as proof of income. These are pay stubs. Bank statements, usually 30 to 90 days. And tax, year, tax returns, which are usually two, the last two years and W-2s. Also, employment history. We're going to get a VOA. So once you get all this stuff, you're going to get pre-approved by an FHA loan expert to determine the loan amount that you actually qualify for. And this is going to help give you a clear budget for your house hunting. You don't want to start house hunting before you have the budget or know what you actually approve for because no one's going to take you serious, one. And then two, you never want to fall in love with that house. Like, oh my God, the house is of my dreams. But I can't get it because I didn't get approved. Now, after you start house hunting and you offer, once pre-approved, you begin searching for a home within your budget, always within that budget, budget. When you find the right one, you submit an offer and you're happy. The loan processing and underwriting, all that stuff, I do that. I handle it. I make it easy, simple, and fun. All I need you to do is to get me like, you know, some of the same documents I just asked for and it gets kind of repetitive, but don't worry about that part yet. After that, your offer is accepted. Your lender will initiate the loan. I'll be getting the documents. I'm dealing with underwriting, the processing, blah, 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 all that hard work you don't have to worry about behind the scenes. We're going to verify your information because we have to make sure everything that you gave us is correct and you're not lying. So don't mind. Be honest with your loan officer. We're going to assess the property. And we're going to make sure everything looks good. Now, if everything goes good, which it tends to go good, because knock on wood, we're good at what we do. Closing. And closing is finally the time where you're finally happy. You see the finish line. We're there. You're getting there. I'm there. The bank attorney's there. Everyone's there. Everyone's just happy at closing. So Cecilia did a loan that used none of your own income, right? Right. We were able to close it. Um, and now, She's gonna finally cut it and go see her investment property. Yay! Are you excited? I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> like, first of many. Because we know that all the hard work is finally coming to an end, and we get to give you your keys and your homeowner, and hopefully you were able to create generational wealth. Now, at the closing stage, you're going to sign documents. You'll be signing a lot because there's a lot of documents to sign. Unfortunately, you you're gonna be busy at closing. I don't do anything. Um, and boom, we're finished. That was a brief overview of the whole process. So in conclusion, understanding an FHA loan is crucial for prospective home buyers looking to buy, looking just for affordable options because not everyone qualifies for conventional. Sometimes FHA is a better option. And sometimes people can qualify for conventional, but the payments might be low on FHA. So it's always best to see both options. Now, by diving into this, I know now you are an expert and you could probably refer some friends like, hey, you know what? FHA might be a good look. Did you check out FHA loans? You don't always have to go conventional. Now, please, you are in a position to make an informed decision because you now are an expert. <laughs> and because you are an expert, you have to make sure you tell people, look at an FHA, see if this type of loan is right for you with their low down payment requirements, their flexible credit guidelines, and other benefits. FHA loans can be a valuable tool 
for you on your tool belt. I'm talking about my superhero. Uh, I don't have Batman there. I have Spider-Man. Oh, Spider-Man has a tool belt too. So now this is a step forward on your path to home ownership. Now, remember, it's always advisable to consult with a mortgage professional, especially one who's FHA approved like me. Help me get to my goal of a million families and get personalized guidance. I cannot repeat that enough. Get personalized guidance. Everyone's situation is different. And the advice that we give you can be tailor made specifically for your situation, which is going to help you. Whew, that was a lot. Now, if you made it to the end of this video, here's your payoff. My special tip for you is most people don't actually know this, but there's a lot of mortgage myths out there. And I'm talking about a lot. But guess what? I actually did a video called Mortgage Myths Busted. And I'll see you there. Over and out.